We need to know population trends of species as well as the status of important habitats worldwide. With that information, we can prioritize which ones need special interventions. We protect biodiversity by recording plant and animal access to cover, food and water. Gathering such information and sharing it in coordination with Geo1 is vital to understanding and protecting nature's life in the reserve. As part of the early detection and rapid response program, it is critical to know which species are invasive in other parts of the world and how they spread and naturalize. Having a coordinated community of practice such as GeoBond is invaluable to access to information and rapid decision making. People have observed and recorded biodiversity probably longer than any other aspect of the environment because it is important in their lives. Yet, when the richness of life on Earth is under serious threat worldwide, decision makers lack the information they need to stem the loss. Putting together a global picture of the status and changes in biodiversity is hard. Most biodiversity information is collected and stored locally or nationally. For this information to be shared, differences in methods, names and data storage protocols have to be resolved. There are over one and a half million known species and it is speculated that the true number may be ten times higher. The species combine in intricate ways to form thousands of ecosystems. These ecosystems provide us with the food, fiber, water, air and medicines we need. Their interactions ensure a stable biosphere, protecting us from floods, diseases and climate change. Bringing together the many forms and sources of biodiversity information is the ambition of the Group on Earth Observation Biodiversity Observation Network, GeoBon. Here is an example of how it works. Satellites orbit the Earth, taking images of the Earth's surface. These images can be used to create maps of things like terrain, climate and soil variables. These can then be linked to biodiversity occurrence data to map patterns in the distribution of biodiversity around the planet. Satellite images can also provide an indication of how land use and vegetation condition changes over time. Combining these remote sensing and biodiversity data, Australian partners in the network are able to estimate how much overall biodiversity is retained as a result of these changes. This allows indicators of loss and threat, such as those found in UNEP's Global Biodiversity Outlook 3, to be calculated. Another example. Observations in the field, many by amateur ornithologists, form the core of the vast data holdings coordinated by BirdLife International. Bringing them together over time and space allows trends in distribution and abundance to be calculated forming the basis of the wild bird indicator in use in Europe and North America. GeoBond's five-year objective is to facilitate the flow of information needed for the Convention on Biological Diversity's indicator set. But right now, some other early products are already available. The 60 years of continuous plankton recorder data from the North Atlantic clearly show how copepod assemblages of the open oceans, a critical fisheries resource, have shifted northward over time as a result of climate change. This tool, developed by the Joint Research Centre of the European Commission and its collaborators, allows the assessment of the state of African protected areas and the ability to prioritise them according to biodiversity values and threats in order to support decision-making and fund allocation processes. Biodiversity is part of humankind's collective inheritance, currently under unprecedented threat. Let's mobilize the power of global information to help save it, for our own good. The Global Biodiversity Observation Network.